Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. I've been in the market for a gaming monitor for my PC upstairs for a while now. I wanted something that could handle a 4K resolution and could also go north of 60 frames per second if my hardware could support it. And so I came across this Samsung monitor the other day that is actually pretty reasonably priced right now for its performance level that I am actually very happy with. This is the Samsung 28 Odyssey G70A. It costs right now about $580 or so, marked down from $799. And I think it might be on sale at the time I'm recording this video through the end of 2022. And it kind of checks all the boxes for me for a gaming monitor. And we're going to take a look at what this monitor is all about in just a second. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that I paid for a portion of this monitor with my own funds. The other portion was compensated to me by an affiliate marketing company called Howl that is trying to build up their relationship with me and other YouTube creators. And they've got a pretty neat system because when you click on the link in the video description, it will take you to the best price with availability. And so we'll give them a shot and see how it goes. However, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. I have no direct relationship with Samsung here, so no one is reviewing or approving what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this monitor is all about. Now this is a 28 inch IPS display. It's got pretty decent viewing angles on it. The image looks great, nice and sharp. Uh, one thing I would say though, is that this is really geared for gaming, not so much for content creation. It runs about 90% of the DCI color gamut, so it's not gonna be accurate color for doing color grading or photography or anything. Those tasks certainly will be executed quite nicely on it though, if you are not all that concerned about color accuracy, but I think for those in a professional environment, they'll want to look elsewhere. But as a gaming monitor, it performs exceptionally well. It runs at 144 Hertz max, it supports G-Sync, and currently I have a PC connected with an NVIDIA GPU on board. And if I go over here to our little information panel here and switch over to that closer view, uh, you'll see that G-Sync is lit up right now, and the frame rate here is varying based on what the PC is sending into it. This will also support AMD FreeSync, so if you plug in an Xbox Series S or X, the variable frame rate stuff will work, and we'll take a look at that a little bit later in the video. Now it runs at a one millisecond response rate, which means you're not gonna see much in the way of image blur. I've been keeping a close eye on this as I've been testing it and everything looks nice and sharp even at these high frame rates with a lot of motion on screen. I also tested it a little bit earlier with my analog NT mini and played some 8-bit Nintendo games on it and those all look super sharp on here too. Uh, this has a 1,000 to 1 contrast ratio, so the black levels here won't be near what you might see on an OLED display, uh, but overall it looks very nice, and it also has some degree of local dimming that it can apply, so it's not going to be as bad as a lower-cost monitor might be, especially when it comes to blacks on screen, but it's not as deep of a black as what you'll get out of something running with an OLED. This has 400 nits of brightness, which I think for gaming purposes in a dimly lit room is going to be fine, but it's not as bright as some of the more expensive gaming monitors are. It does support HDR, but I'm not going to recommend this for content consumption, especially if 4K HDR is important to you. And the reason is, is that its maximum brightness is 400 nits. So when HDR modes are enabled on this, it gets very dim, even at the highest brightness setting, in order to accentuate those brighter areas of the scene. So I didn't really get a good experience watching Netflix and that sort of thing on it. If you just leave it at regular 4K without the HDR, it looks fine. But of course, HDR images look a lot better. And this does not support Dolby Vision, uh, which of course will provide an even more robust HDR experience. That is lacking on here. Again, mostly just straight up gaming on this one. Although it looks like it has two speakers on it, it does not have any speakers at all but there is an audio output underneath it, so you could plug in speakers and route audio through the monitor that way. You have three inputs, two HDMIs and one display port. It supports HDMI 2.1 out of both of those HDMI ports and display port 1.4. One thing that I've discovered in the course of testing this monitor is that your cables are very important, especially 
at the HDMI level. So a little earlier we plugged in my Xbox Series S and we found that the cable that it came with was not able to keep up with the display because that cable wasn't an HDMI 2.1 cable, believe it or not. So I would recommend making sure that you've got HDMI 2.1 cables and make sure if you're using DisplayPort that your DisplayPort cables can handle DisplayPort 1.4. And that's all very important because of the bandwidth that high frame rate 4K video signals require. And this is important even for an Xbox Series S because although it can't render the games at 4K, it does output its video signal at 4K and renders the game at a lower resolution internally. And what happens when you hit the end of the bandwidth on the cable is that the video signal often just cuts out. So getting those HDMI 2.1 cables here is very important. Now the included stand is a little more wobbly than I would like, especially if you have a cheap IKEA desk like I do. So it does bounce around a little bit more than I'm comfortable with. It does though have a Visa mount in the box so you can mount it onto another stand that might be a little more sturdy or onto the wall or something like that. It does stick out quite a bit here as you can see. Uh, so you do need to leave some room on it. But you got a good range of motion here on the stand. As you can see, we can go left and right here. Uh, we also have a little bit of tilt movement, not too much. And then you can go up and down here as well. And when you get it up to the highest mark here, uh, you can actually flip it around. Although I don't think it sends the computer the orientation of the display, but you could go into Tate mode uh, for some of those classic arcade games or something with this. So you do have a good range of potential motion here for getting it situated the way you like. It weighs about 17.4 pounds or 7.89 kilograms, and I've been measuring the power consumption on it. The specs say that it consumes 78 watts of power, but that's just the maximum power that the power supply can provide. It's actually running at about 50 watts in my testing when it's running at a high frame rate at 4K. So if you were curious about power consumption, I think 50 watts is around the max. It does have a USB hub built in with two USB ports, so it's possible you might draw a little bit of power out of those perhaps, but generally I think 50 to 55 watts should probably be the max to expect here. So let's take a look now and see how the Xbox works with it. I have this Series S right now configured in the variable frame rate mode, and this is a game that supports up to 120 frames per second. This is Star Wars Squadrons. And if we pull up the uh, little information tab here, you can see that we are getting a free sync uh, detection here, and our frame rate is running around 80 hertz right now but we're outputting to the display's native resolution of 4K, even though this game internally is rendering at a lower frame rate. But it looks and plays great here, and the monitor is detecting FreeSync, which is what the Xbox uses for its variable frame rates here. And all in a good experience here on both the PC and the console. I do not own a PlayStation 5, so I'm not able to test that, but I would expect that the PlayStation should perform similar to how the Xbox is here. And of course, if you have an Xbox Series X, you'd have the benefit of the 4K rendering capabilities of that console. Now, when you have a FreeSync or G-Sync device attached, you don't have much in the way of image adjustments here. You've got brightness, contrast, sharpness, and color, and that is it. There's not much in the way of image processing here. And that's to cut down on input lag because the more processing the display does, the more that's in the way of your button push getting registered on the display. And I found the input lag on this to be among the best I've ever tested. So what I like to do is hook up my analog NT Mini here, which runs at 1080p 60. And it uses a hardwired old school NES controller, which is in the tangle of wires below my desk here. And shooting my screen at 240 frames per second, I found that it was almost as responsive as a CRT that I plugged this into. So it's pretty much at the limit of what my camera can detect insofar as lag is concerned. So this is a very low lag experience, but you give up being able to make a lot of fine adjustments of the image. There is a picture-in-picture -picture mode, but when this is enabled, FreeSync and G-Sync stop working. So I think this is of limited utility uh, for people that are looking for the best performance. Now, if you disable the adaptive synchronization, you can make a few adjustments like the maximum frame rate of the display. 
You can, for example, lock it in at 60 or 120 or 144, but beyond that, there isn't much that you can do to adjust the image on the display itself. One other thing worth noting here is that it does have some lights on board. So if I enable the front and back here, you can see it lights up here on the left and right hand side of the display. You can also change the color if you want. So you do have some degree of customization here to the lights if that's your kind of thing. But you can also, of course, disable the lights if they are distracting. So who is this monitor for? Well, I think if you're somebody who's just looking for a high frame rate 4K display, this one is certainly gonna fit the bill. That's what I was looking for. It doesn't have much in the way of features. It's not all that great for media consumption, but it does very well at playing games. And if that is your desire, I think you'll be very happy with this one. It also seems to work quite well with the Xbox Series S and X for their variable frame rate modes. Just make sure you've got the right cable. If you are someone doing more creative work or in need of more image processing features, this is not for you. But if raw performance is all you need, I think you'll be very happy with this one. I know that I sure am, especially for the price I paid for it. That is going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Brian Parker, Chris Allegretta, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Logic KGR, Tom Albrecht, and Amda Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.